My name is Daniel Rosenbaum. I'm a psychiatrist in Toronto, and I'm speaking today as a member of Health Workers Alliance for Palestine. I'm also one of many Jewish people around the world who oppose Israel's occupation of Palestinian lands and its genocidal violence against Palestinian people. We find ourselves in a time when bombing hospitals and healthcare workers with impunity is treated as some kind of new normal. When every day we watch ambulances, crews, and patients in Gaza hunted by precision weapons, some manufactured through Canadian arms exports to Israel. We find ourselves in a time when these crimes against humanity are actively defended by our politicians and leaders when they are condoned by the silence of many of our own fellow citizens, healthcare colleagues, and medical associations. We find ourselves in a time when the deliberate target targeting of civilians in war is deemed acceptable, when images and videos of hospital patients being burned alive, some while still connected to their IV drips, stream across our phones. At this very moment, the people of northern Gaza are being subjected to a campaign of deliberate starvation, ethnic cleansing, and mass extermination with an intensity rarely matched in modern history. And it is not much different elsewhere across occupied Palestine or Lebanon. We find ourselves in a time when those who dare speak up are systematically attacked, punished, and threatened. We are asked to just look the other way and go on with our lives. Don't look up, keep calm and carry on. We cannot accept this. We will not accept this. It's been said already this morning, but it bears repeating. Over 1,000 health workers in Gaza have been killed in the past year. 23 out of 38 hospitals in Gaza have been destroyed and are completely closed. And make no mistake, the remaining 15 are able to provide some critical services only because as the bombs continue to fall with genocidal persistence, with equal persistence, Palestinians are rebuilding. Health workers in Gaza are humans like us. They are not superheroes. They have no special powers to cope with the constant flow of dead and mutilated bodies that they struggle to treat with the limited supplies that make it through the military blockade. They are not built to work in these conditions for months and years without rest any more than the rest of us. They experience the sudden discovery of their own injured or dead children and loved ones on the exam table, on the hospital floor, as we would. And yet they persist. They work to preserve and cultivate life in the face of relentless industrialized slaughter.